So allow me to share my screen. Can you see my screen, right? Okay, so uh, what is GBT? So GBT is a technology that's uh, founded in 2016 and originally it was open sourced. Oh, okay. So DBT was founded in 2016 and originally it was an open source project and now still has a free version of it with, it, with its open source license and more than 9,000 companies still use it currently and it's growing because of its functionality and the usefulness. And it has also an enterprise level DBT lab. Around two key companies are commercially using it. So in just February, they secured around 200 million from Snowflake and Dataprix uh, investment team uh, because they saw really potential that works for uh, their data warehouses. And now it has the company has about 4.2 billion valuation. So DBT becomes a de facto standard, industry standard for data transformation tool. Uh, so that's what DBT is used for. So before I'm going to discuss about DBT, first let me just highlight what ETL uh, versus ELT data pipelines means. So uh, these days now ETL is becoming more of a legacy system uh, because of the data warehouse are becoming more robust and scalable and uh, storage is much cheaper now. But previously still it's working as a extraction transformation load uh, pipeline is uh, First, you extract your data sources from different data uh, source and you transform them so that you will not have raw data in your database because you don't afford uh, more of the storage space or some sort of functionalities. So you have to first transform it and then use only the usable form of the data in your uh, database that you load. Uh, but now these days, the Snowflake uh, redshift from Amazon to query those uh, large scale data warehouses become uh, more uh, cheaper and so that you can first extract your raw data and then just uh, dump it or load it to your data warehouse and then for different uses, you can transform them uh, for different outputs. So this is basically the ATL and LT version of data pipeline means. So DBT. Uh, comes in the transformation part. So it's more of basically the transformation in the ELT uh, because you have to first load your data in your and prepare your data in your data warehouse so that now you can transform it. So as this uh, diagram shows, you can have uh, different raw data sources from different what you, whatever you need for your analysis or for your other need and then you extract that and you just dump it in your data warehouses those raw data and now you have the raw data and with the dbt capability you can transform it as much and as many you want for the transformed data set preparation so that these transformed data sets can be uh, consumed by for example the bi tools or other ml pipelines for whatever reasons that you are using for your data set so what dbt does in the ELT uh, pipeline is it is a T part, so it does your transform uh, your data. So uh, uh, functionally, this is all what DBT means. So it's where from your data warehouses you can transform your data, and then you can prepare it. So how it, DBT works is basically you have uh, raw data, and DBT allowed us. Uh, to just develop, you, you can have all of the uh, software environment, uh, software pipelines, for example, version control, CI, CD, uh, repeatability testing, that all can be trans that can be implemented in uh, DBT. So that's what makes DBT more, uh, more attractive for other 
other than those transformation tools, then you can prepare your data sets for many consumptions. So now, uh, if, I, if you have any questions, feel free to stop me and ask. Okay, so now I'm just going to dive to the uh, technicalities of it. So if you have any questions for that, you can ask me. Okay, book. Uh, hi. So my, my question is, um, yeah, DBT is responsible for the transformation of the data. Yes. But before transforming the data, are we not supposed to uh, discuss the, what, what type of data we have, to, the, the, the BI or the machine learning uh, data users are expect, expecting? I mean, so in order to decide where to, to transform the data. Yes, so that's a great question. So if you have raw data, that can, that raw data can be anything, whatever the, that's coming from the pipeline, from the extraction part, and then according to your uh, BI needs or the ML models that you are needing for, you can transform those data to your uh, need data sets. So for example, assume like you have raw data and you want to just visualize for your BI need, so you can transform from the raw data in your data warehouse because uh, the raw data is available in the data warehouse. Now you can just, according to the needs that, that the data set is needed, you can just transform into that. I'll just show you that in a minute. Am I clear or? Okay, sure. So uh, basically what DBT does is just transform your data. That's all what you need to know. Um, so now, so uh, this is a pipeline that feels really good to explain what DBT does. So now you have to first extract your data and your raw data should be in the data warehouse. This is where you start now, uh, uh, now performing DBT models and transformations. So this DBT assumes that you have a raw data uh, just in your data warehouse. So I just prepared some examples on it. Um, so here, ah, okay, first. So I just pulled uh, from Kaggle data sets, just a sample of supermarket sales that you can find in Kaggle. And then <clears throat> uh, from this data sets, I just loaded that in my uh, experimental databases. And now this is how I just uh, load uh, this data set to my Postgres database. Now that this database, this uh, table or yeah, this raw data is now available in the Postgres database. And <laughs> Now I can show you that here. I'm just testing, so I'll clear all these things. So let me check my tables. So just to show you what DBT does, I'm gonna uh, remove all the other tables except the sales one. Now we are going to group. So in my uh, database, I only have uh, one which I just loaded from this uh, notebook. So this is all what I have now. So I'll just check it. This is this raw data is available, and 
uh, now uh, just in dbt dbt you can just uh, install dbt um, pip install dbt in your environment and then uh, two things okay uh, two things that you should know is that when you install dbt uh, when you install dbt you just have to configure two config sheets uh, i'll share the link for exactly how you install dbt and prepare uh, the, your project folders then it is all simple so here i have all the when i just initialized the dbt project it all created this whole folder saying all what is necessary so when you install dbt uh, the first thing that you should do is uh, just you just have to connect to your database so that uh, it, it knows your database credentials so in your i hope in your uh, home directory it will just when you, when you install and initialize dbt it will create a profile so yaml file and just to just to check that you have to configure now so here now i just set up uh, the type the user and password and every connections in the target where the dbt should uh, should dump the transformer data set is all set here you can add for example i just made this uh, div then if you have just even a production database you can just add it here so that now you can test your data in your development environment and then once you are satisfied with that you can just uh, change the, the development environment to production environment so that's all accessible uh, with dbt um, so now i just initialized that uh, any questions Okay, Rafa. Yes, hi. Uh, so, if you can explain more in the projects and develop environments, like uh, how exactly, like we can, you, you said now that we can edit them, and, like how exactly are you supposed to, to, to think of when I write that? Uh, sorry, I didn't get all of that. Uh, is your question like on the development and uh, test environment in the DBT or? No, no. Actually, it's not. Um, when Python, I mean, um, the develop and uh, that product is pro pro uh, product, right? And I mean, if you can go to the okay. terminal. Yeah. Okay. So I will just ask you. Yeah, in the profiles. In the, yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So here, when I'm editing the uh, those uh, develop and product environment. Uh, that's like how just how exactly i mean what i'm supposed to edit here or what i should change so here uh, mm -hmm. for example in my case i'm using a postgres database so i'm just set the type is postgres and here it's hosted in aws and the user and the password port and the database name the schema all your uh, connection credentials and information that you just to pass for dbt should be here so assume for example i have two databases one is for testing and development purpose and one is actual uh, the actual one so i will just test my models for what i'm designing in dbt and then i'll just check that in the test or development environment and then i'll just change uh, once i'm satisfied with the models that i have i'll just change uh, these credentials to the actual database that is commercially uh, output. Correct. 
to the gate. So it has nothing to do with the schema. Uh, no, if you have another schema, you can just for for me I'm just going simple, so I'm using the public. But if you have another schema, you can also add it here. Okay, so now once you have just checked all these uh, connections and installed DBT, now you have to be in the uh, DBT folder to just run DBT commands. So here, one I have to check that. DBT debug. So it will check my connections. That are okay. So now the profiles that I mean file is okay and found. And another one is uh, this in the folder. That one the profiles is it's put it not in your repository. It's just in the home directory. So you can't just push it by mistake. In GitHub. So here. There is another project, project you can name whatever you want here. And here, once what you have to do is you just have to name uh, the profile name. So this profile name should match uh, this one. So here, my profile name says I'm just using my name. So this profile should be matching this one so that it knows what the credentials are. And yeah, configure for example here i just materialized as view and so once that's all connection is ready uh, all checks as passed in screen so what i'm going trying to do is first uh, let's just check the sales database uh, okay what is my yeah, feel free to stop me and ask anything that's not clear. Okay, I'll just go through what materialized means. Uh, so, as shown here, now in my database, I only have one uh, table. So I want to just, from this table, I want to just extract uh, some uh, SQL statements to just uh, filter some of what I need. So I just prepare, for example, for here. Uh, this is what dbt, exactly dbt means in your models. You can just create as many as you want uh, SQL statements. So basically what dbt means is that it's injecting SQL statements in your project and it will change that to actual SQL code. So I just said now that uh, the materialized is as table. And here I also have a schema. That, that's also one of those things that's necessary. Here in my schema, uh, I just name whatever I want here and description. And what matters is, is the database and the table's name. So here the table's name is sales, which is I have here. And the database experiment. And you can just in here you can document uh, whatever you want in the what, to describe the columns and the descriptions on it. Just to show you the, I just select four of them and add some descriptions on it. So I'll just show you in a bit later how DBT documents your uh, database. So here, for example, I just select some of columns from the sales table, and I only wanted as uh, gender as female. I did that and I here also I have another one just for male part. You can create as many uh, complex uh, queries, whatever that you want here. That's all what DBT wants here to do. Now I have that. Uh, when you create actually DBT initialize, there is also another just for us as an example. It's just my first DBT model. It's just show us uh, what this is. So here once what what you have to notice is i just made the material is just table both of them so now what i need to do is just give it run so it's compiled successfully and it's not giving my information so this is my first activity model and sales only female and sales only male uh, all of this 
uh, SQL statements are now uh, are now compiled. And if you have an error, it will just show the information where the error is. Uh, now let's just check how the database is affected. So when you check now from the tables, now it was this before. Now all the transformer data that I just wrote here are now also added in the table in my database. So this is all about DBT, what you should know. First, I only have one table, and then from that table, I can query whatever select statements I want, and then DBT does it, what you say, and create your uh, tables. Uh, so now from these tables, you can actually pull some data sets for ML models for, or for BI uh, visualizations and other data sets needs. Uh, so now let me back to my slide. And yeah, I'll just finish that part. So this is things you should know about dbt i just considered uh, i went through this profile yaml file this is where your uh, credentials about your database connection uh, you put it and in the schema you just uh, tell the dbt that what kind of uh, documentations you want to have uh, this and then you have to name the database name and the schema and you can create all the documents that you need here so this is where uh, uh, this is where you can select in this source cells is in this schema so this sales data is using uh, this run okay okay Brooke yeah I, I just want to uh, understand the, the connection how they are actually linked uh, the, the tables you have first and then the one with the dbt so but i just want you to go through the, the link okay so uh, first i only had uh, here i just only load uh, one table from a csv file so for in the first place in my database i only had one table as I showed you here and now when I just run the dbt command dbt run command it will just check in the models folder all of these SQL statements and these SQL statements will be compiled so uh, if, you just, if I can show you there is a target folder and this is a compiled version of what you write here this is what dbt actually do so this was my select statement from the DVD. And now if you just check, for example, uh, let's say sales mail. Now, this is exactly, this is a clean SQL code. Uh, this one is a Jinja templated and the connections. But here, what DVD actually uh, compiled from what you wrote here is actually a clear uh, SQL statement. So just to show you, for example, I can copy this and I can run it in the SQL command. So it will just run all of these SQL statements. So first, uh, this is a DBT uh, profile configuration. So here I have all the connections, credentials, username, password, and all of the things. So now DBT can on behalf of me, DBT can run SQL statements is, and I just compile uh, DBT run. Is that your question? I don't, I don't really. Have I addressed your question, Brooke? Yeah, okay. Uh, I'll just show you the link about DBT. This is really great uh, from each step you can have how you can install dbt and set up your projects and all you need to know in details you can just check it here i only wanted to show you what dbt actually means and what actually it does 
is uh, what you should know. And you have all the technicalities, how to configure the, your profiles and how to connect with your uh, connections. That is all uh, in that YouTube and other resources. So basically, now I transformed my data. And now I have, uh, I have like four tables. I can add, for example, here, if I want uh, in the, in the models, now I can add another one, for example, this, 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 this SQL. And for example, here I want to ask this. And now I can create this and whatever I want to select, for example, here I want to say, let's say the branch is only for branch to be hard of this is to three. Okay, for example, only I wanted branch A. This I'm just showing you that the basics of it, but uh, you can really calculate so many SQL queries on it. And now I just added that. And let me just run uh, the run again. So now I have four of uh, the tables. So let's just check here. Okay. So now here I have uh, the what I have added here is being built as a table in the database. So this is what DBT uh, technically means. You can create as many tables as you want and from different sources. You can just combine and all what SQL statements from all the database can do actually be implemented in DBT. And the other thing that Facility, materialization. So materialization in database means there are two kinds of things, uh, view and table. So what basically just means is, for example, in now I'm in the database command, <coughs> from here, I just select, select all from sales, and then now when I enter, Sales. Now this loading here is showing me this is as a view. So this will not be, uh, for example, if your database crashes, this view will uh, will be removed and rejected, and only what we left with is all those uh, tables that are actually materialized as table. So here, uh, for example, in Postgres, if you say slash dt. You are asking to show all the tables in your database. So the, these are actually the tables. And if you want to show uh, the views, you can actually give me. And now I don't have any kind of uh, views in my table. So let's just change this. And for example, in this test SQL, I want not as a table, but as a view. So now if I, uh, I have to run my DVD first, okay. It's completed successfully. So let's just take now to show any if you have any views. So this is not actually a table, but it's a view. So if I want to check the tables that I have, now I don't have the it as a table, but as a view. So uh, you can use both of them, but uh, a view is a faster and actually not stored permanently. So if you want like quick uh, visualization or quick uh, queries about your table, you can just use that as, as a view. So this will not require more space in the database, but it's not stored permanently. So if you want uh, all of your queries to be stored permanently in your database, you have to just change this materialization as a uh, table. So I'll just leave this as a view. So now I have two as a table and Wanna save you? Okay, somebody has a question. Okay, D A Mark. Okay. Thank you, Yuel. That was a very good presentation. But uh, I have one question. 
Uh, so can you show me your profile, Yeah, sure. So your profile, when you just uh, initialize DBT project, it will create not in your uh, repository, but in another place in your computer and probably in home directory. So here, that's why I just created another terminal that just directs me to the uh, home yeah, directory. So, yeah, so this is uh, my project. So my question is uh, the schema, uh, yeah. is it the original schema or a new schema for DVT? You can use both of them. For example, for here, I, I just used only public schema because I don't have any schema in my database. That's why I just used a public one. When you create a database in Postgres, it will create a, a public schema. But if you have another schema, you can just mention that the name of your schema here and all the connections will be fine. Okay, thank you. So one thing you should know is that it's actually included in the YouTube video, but this is the name of your uh, profile YAML should be in this in this one, this project YML. So the name of this should match. Otherwise, when you just try, if you want to know if your database is connected with your DVT, DVT people, then you can just run on your uh, profile and check the project files and the profile XML file. Now, so this is basically what DBT means, and other things that you should know is that DBT also has a documentation. So now I want to know. I want to just explain for other team members how my database looks like and how what columns are. So I don't have to explain for every one of them. I just uh, DBT can build me a documentation on it. So the simple thing I can do is dbt docs generate now generate a documentation about all of my data models and all of that. So this now a catalog is written in your uh, target file. So this is a catalog JSON file. So you don't have to actually bother about this because dbt can also do uh, your simple website thing interface. What can be is PVT books now serve. So now it's serving in my local host and it's taking so long. Let me just read it again. Okay, I'm going to serve it again. I don't know why this is happening. I think the address request it is being used. Let's just wait a little bit if you have any questions about that. Okay, that does it. Okay, good morning, uh, you. Good I, morning to you. I need to ask uh, um, how do you set up everything uh, you on this type of project, for example? If you need to 
work with uh, Airflow, EBT, <coughs> for data transformation issues and uh, for visualization, for example. If it is uh, a dash, how do you set up everything together? Is it work on window, for example? I'm using a window. Yeah, yeah, it kind of. I'm struggling with that. And we set up in those things. So OK, so uh, maybe from experience. Yeah. So DBT, when you install DBT, it will have uh, some dependence on it. So it is better to use a fresh, uh, a fresh environment, a condi environment or a better environment on it. And everything that you need to know is here uh, in this that link I shared with you. This is really a great resource that you can find on the internet. Everything from initializing a DBT and everything you need to know is uh, step by step is here. So I just also use this when I just set up and you just install first DBT, pip install DBT in our environment and then just create a fresh repository. Now we have a repository on that. You can just create a folder and then DBT in it. Can you just run DBT in it? I already that's why I already have created this when I just DBT initialize uh, my project but when you just I just created the IDBT folder and then in that folder I just run DBT in it. And it, it created all of these uh, things by itself. So the only thing that I'm worrying about is just in the models folder, you can actually create uh, the models that you want. Uh, the, the transformation models that you want as transformation. This is the SPL statements on it. So have I answered your questions? Yes, yes. Yeah, so it's better. I recommend uh, to have to use uh, fresh, uh, fresh on the environment so that it is not conflict with others. So now this is serving. Let's just check. So, so yeah, now this is what I brought here. So here in the schema, if you remember, I just tried to just add some descriptions on it and even the column name, some of them, I just tried to add some kind of documentations and it will now be here. So here, this is my source and here for my source, I can just check what my source is. So that's why here, for example, I just only selected some of them and added a description, you can taste, you can and can show even you can have now take a look at what is clear statement is extracting and the columns the descriptions what they will need so in the projects you can just check models so this is my folder structure here what i showed you uh, this one is a material as a view if you remember so it is not uh, implemented here in the tables but if i just check now uh, uh, this is a visualization of the views. So I have one text view and uh, four tables. So all of the models are now you can see here, and uh, you can even add descriptions for your models. And this this was my source SQL that I just wrote, and then it will combine and the compiled version of it. You can also get it here. So all of the documents. This really helps when you are working anything, for example. So any explanation about your models and your data and all of the uh, columns and the types of the columns and descriptions everything you need here is now documented and served so that you can host this and even if you have more models you can search for models and one thing that i want to show is the uh, graph so here uh, for example uh, i want to see the public schema on it Let's just take so here you can see the different connections of your tables and all the models. Uh, I don't know it's not showing for me right now, but so, 
So if you have uh, different models and different tables, it will show the connections and it will draw the line graph on it. Okay, let me just check a bit graph. Uh, so this is also one thing that DBT supports. Uh, it provides documentations and can basically have everything you need here. Uh, yeah, so this is not link. You can just host this on any website hosting environment. So one thing, if you have, do you have any questions about the documentation before I move from the visualization on Tableau? So one thing that you should really, really know is uh, materialization as views and as tables, as I just explained. And there is also sources you can. If I have only one database in one table, but if you have uh, different, just like this, this diagram, if I have different data sources, in your data I'll have different data sources. So DBT can also handle from different data sources, uh, compiled and merging and concatenating things. Uh, and yeah, documentation you can generate books and you can set the books. So, let me do the Great. When you just change your, for example, if you add more models on it, just run DBT docs generate and it will add the added descriptions and the docs generated. Um, yeah, so here now I have all of my models that I just created here. I have uh, my first little model, and this one is just created. So, this for example, I just select the females only customers. So, you can just, for example, here you can use the documentation on that, you can read. And what the problem is, is this model from me and uh, how it is compiled. You can also check it here. You can take it in uh, SQL. Uh, so, yeah, this is what uh, the language graph shows. Also, there is a connecting the sites and identifying all the sites. So now I have different, so assume like you have many, many models for actual production environment, then you will have different and you can actually also uh, the connection on it. Yeah. So now I want to visualize what I just created here. So here, this is Tableau. And in Tableau, you can uh, actually this is a paid version, so most of you might not actually be able to connect with a database. But in the uh, free version, you can actually do uh, the CSV files and upload that, and you can have visualizations. Uh, but for me, I have a database, so I connected that here. Now, here, when I just created the DBT run, it also created all of the tables here. But now I didn't refresh that. So here, as you know, I had four tables, materialized as table and one as a test. So that's exactly what this means. So let me just refresh this. Now I have a test that materialized as a view, but here I can just uh, use it as a table. So you can just check what you have here. So yeah, it might be materialized as you, it might be materialized as table. That doesn't matter here for visualization purpose. But, but as I told you, uh, views are faster, but not permanently stored. So if, for example, if your database crashes, 
then you lose your materialized as view, but the tables will be stored. So, uh, yeah, so for example, here I have the initial table, then all of my other tables. I, excuse me for some of the noises in my environment. Uh, so, this, for example, from sales, I want to just visualize, uh, let's say, the total price and how that looks based on your gender. And it's just simple, like drag and drop things. So, the female and the male, then you can also use create, for example, pie chart and whatever charts that you are looking for. So, it's always really simple and really Cool. I want visualization to software and you can also add whatever complex visualization on it. So I want to see this as for example, yeah. it's from a simple side. So it's kind of trying to so yeah. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Time is running. Kind of see how that relates to its performance. Okay. Okay, Nardos. Okay. Uh, yeah, but if okay. Use, uh, uh, okay, so uh, I have uh, two questions. Uh, I don't know if you are familiar with uh, Wiki 11's challenge. So the data we are currently working with is uh, traffic flow data. Uh, we have uh, uh, different columns. We have track, track ID type, uh, travel distance, average speed, latitude, longitude, speed, longitude acceleration, latitude acceleration in time. So what kind of uh, transformations uh, can we apply to this uh, column in DBT? So that's my first question. And uh, my second question is, um, as I mentioned uh, in the columns, we have a column called average speed. And uh, if the average speed is uh, in meter per second, and I want to convert uh, it to kilometer per hour. So uh, if I convert, uh, so is there a way to convert it, uh, to convert the unit in dBT? And yeah. uh, if I am able to do that, is, that, is it even a transformation? Yes. So, yes, that's a transformation. So in uh, SQL, if you are, uh, familiar with SQL statements, you can actually create, that's exactly what DBT is for actually. So here uh, you can create uh, in SQL, for example, you have a formula for to change uh, kilometer per hour to meter per second or vice versa. And you just have to apply that in your select statement. So uh, technically, for example, how can I show you? You can actually uh, apply uh, any kind of mathematical operations in SQL statements on whatever uh, the columns that you want. So that first you have to check the formula and then you can apply that in uh, your column. So in your uh, row or in your source uh, table, you have the original one, but uh, you can actually create here, for example, the kilometer per hour meter to meter and yeah so i just create another model so here you can actually start uh, just select from the table that were originally and then you can apply the transformations on it you can multiply your uh, yeah. column values with uh, the formula that changes to you on whatever you want yeah. and then you can when you actually uh, dvt run it you'll have the you'll have the transformant Data, so you can actually do that. On your first question, can you remind me again? I just forgot it. So, in the traffic flow data, what kind of other transformations can we apply? Uh, that depends on that depends on the requirements of the project. So, uh, I don't exactly get what you want to do. Yeah, what the need that you want to do? Uh, I can answer that one more. Um, so the, the very first things just are, you know, you can count, right? So you can count by car type. You can do on 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 days. So it's kind of you can hypothesize for what the 
the kind of in this case what you are let's say just your traffic um you you wanted to know like you wanted to build a dashboard that illustrates some kind of the uh, what is affecting traffic right so you could actually just then go and say like okay how many are in the in the stops how many are kind of pausing how many are slowing down and what time so you you can really hypothesize and just build those transformations or get transformation means basically sometimes counting them filtering them um but then you can also translate and then you can try to even create some other you know some form of learning right what is the, the behavior of drivers and you can apply some kind of really big model transformation there but everything is a transformation and that's probably even comes when you are thinking of spark in that sense so does that, does that make it does that make sense yeah yes yes it does thank you okay uh, any other questions uh, i'm finished like i have presented all what i wanted to show you like what dbt does is so just to recap again one more time uh, dbt is just basically a transformation tool it will just inject sql statements to your projects and then uh, fetch some uh, uh, tables from that so now the difference between ETL and the LT pipeline, uh, DBT is more of the ALT. You have to first extract and load the data in your uh, database, then you can actually transform it in your warehouse. Uh, and you can have applied transformations. And yeah, this is all about DBT then. Uh, all of the transformations, the transformed uh, tables, can actually be pulled, for example, for a BI need. You can have all of the tables here, the models that you have. The best the raw data was this one. Now I have transformed some of them just like this. So, uh, yeah, uh, for example, if you want to count uh, traffic flows, you can actually uh, model something on it. And then you have as a view or as a table, you can create it. And now you can pull from this and you can actually visualize what you need. Okay. Yeah, that's all I have. Any other questions before I'm going? Like in four minutes, I have another meeting. Okay, so I'll just check. Okay. Well, I think great. I think this is this was awesome. Thank you, Yuel, and hopefully people have the the taste of what you can do or at least just the different elements that's here and there probably it was slightly faster but he covered a number of things and in particular also just think about uh, using you know you're gonna be using redash instead of a tableau but i think i recommend people just to download um, tableau and also play with it just to have kind of some understanding all of these visualizers especially tableau you know power bi are similar they are much more like you only need a few uh, days of experience and of course to be expert you have to work on them but being able to present something nicely and build one project there's also google studio you can try always have at least one uh, thing that you're good at at visualization because you you will need it like communication is the essential thing um, that you have to do what, whatever you do whatever wherever you are like machine learning engineer web three engineer or um, data engineer, you definitely need a place or a, a tool that you visualize some kind of communicate um, uh, your thing. So definitely go for, try it and learn the basic principles of what they use um, in Redash it, or whether or Redash or um, Tableau, but Tableau just have a basic grasp of it. And thank you, um, UL, for being willing and, and putting your time into this really good uh, tutorial. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Thank you, guys. Have a great day. Bye, everyone.